Welcome to part 2 of the Java tutorial video. In the previous video we covered the if, if else, and nested if statements. In this video we will go over the switch statement and how to test two strings for equality. Now how do you compare strings? To compare the strings for equality you have to use the dot equals or the dot compare to methods of the string class. Remember, you cannot use the two equal signs to test if two strings are equal. You will only be testing the address location and not the value or the contents of that variable. So for example, if you have two strings, one X and one Y, and they both have the same value, you must use the X dot equals Y or the X dot compared to Y to test for their equality. Both methods of equals and compared to have the ignore case method as well and this ignores the case of whatever value you're testing. So if the first string has a capital C, but the second string has a lowercase c, the ignore case will ignore the difference in cases. As an alternative to if statements, there is a switch statement. In some cases, you can use a switch statement in place of multiple if statements, and you can still get the same result. A switch statement is just like an if statement that has multiple tests, but you do not need to have multiple if or if else statements written. In the example written below, that's the form in which the switch statement is written. Switch, then the variable to test, and then inside the curly braces you have multiple cases. Each of those cases are the different if statements, what would be if statements. So case value one, if the variable equates to the first value, then that first case will execute and then it'll exit and then if it's not the first value it'll move on to the next one and then to the next one. We'll take a look at this in a demonstration soon. And now let's take a look at the switch statement. A switch statement is just like a nested if statement only instead of constantly writing if or if else you just write switch and the variable that you're going to be using. In this case, we're going to be making this variable called day and we're going to give it the value of Monday. And inside the parentheses here next to switch is the variable that you're going to test. So in this case, it's day. Then you put the curly brace and you close the curly brace as well. And then you start off by writing case and then the value that it's going to be to return to execute this code. In this case, since we're using a string, this case, all of these cases must be strings. As you can see, case here is Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, all as a string. So if case, if the case is that it's Sunday, that day is a Sunday, then system out print, it is Sunday, and then break. So it exits the case. And if it's not Sunday, it's going to move on to the next case, test it if it's Monday, and if it is, it prints it out. And then again, if it's not Monday, it goes into the next one. And this keeps on going until you reach the default. It's ideal to have the default just in case it's none of these. In case none of the cases are the result, it goes to the default and it says it isn't Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. In this case, it will go out to Monday because we have it set to Monday. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. It is Monday. So it skipped Sunday because it's not Sunday and it went right to Monday because it is Monday and then it skipped case Tuesday and it skipped the default. Now let's change this to Tuesday and rerun it. And you'll see that now it says that it's Tuesday. And finally, let's print one that's not there. Let's say that it is Friday. It should skip Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday because it's not one of these, and it'll go to the default. So let's go ahead and run this once more, and you'll see that it says that it isn't Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. That's how a switch works, and as you can see, in most cases, a switch is a lot easier to use than an if-else statement. Before concluding this video of the if statements, the if-else, and the switch statements, Let's go over how to compare strings. If you recall from the PowerPoint, I mentioned that you cannot use the equal signs, the two equal signs, to test the equality of two strings. Remember that the two equal signs are used to test the contents of two variables. But strings, given that they are different from other types of data types, such as int, double, chars, and booleans, you cannot directly use the 
two equal signs to test their contents. You have to use the string method equals or equals ignore case or compare to. In this example, I've made three strings called word one, word two, and word three. Word one has the word program. Word two has the word program with a capital G. And then word three is initialized in a different manner. It's first given a value of an empty string and then word 3 is given the value of the concatenation of word 3 with word 1. Let's go ahead and show what happens when you use, like you're supposed to, the equals method. Word 1 equals word 2. If the words are equal, then it'll print out that the words are equal. Let's go ahead and run it. And you'll see that it doesn't print anything, and that's because the words are not equal in the sense that they have different cases. One has a lowercase g, and the other has an uppercase g. Let's uncomment this test here, where word one equals ignore case word two. This one will ignore the case of the two words. And if they are indeed equal, then it'll print out the words are equal, ignoring the case. Let's go ahead and run it. The words are equal and it's ignoring the case, just like it should. And now I've changed the value of word two to program. So word two is now the same as word one. And here we're doing word one equals word two, but we're, instead of using the dot equals or the dot equals ignore case, I'm using the two equal signs. This is the way that you're not supposed to test the equality of strings. And although, let's, re let's run this, and although it does say that the words are equal using the two equal signs, it's not going to work all the time, as you will see in this example here. Now, I'm going to be testing if word 1 is equal to word 3. And recall that word 1 has been initialized immediately. Word 1 gets the value of program whereas word three was initialized as blank and then was given the value of word one. Let's go ahead now and test to see what happens there. I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out again and now we're only left with this, word one equals word three. Let's see what happens, print it out. And you'll see this time it doesn't show anything and that's because the words are not equal. And that's because the contents, even though the contents are equal, this equal signs is not testing the contents of these two strings. It's testing something called the address location of each string instead of the contents. And to test the contents, that's where you must use the dot equals or the dot equals ignore case or the dot compare to methods. Now we're going to run this once more as word one equals word three. And as you can see that the words are equal, but using the dot equals method. And that's because it's testing out the actual contents of the two strings rather than testing their address locations. This concludes part two of the tutorial video. If you watched the first video, we covered the if, if else, and nested if statements. And in this video, we covered the switch statement and testing strings for equality. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.